Joseph calling from Savannah, Georgia, to kick off this hour. What's up, Joseph? Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, just uh, wanted to call and uh, ask for some words of encouragement and um, help me as a, to stay off losing motivation. I'm on uh, baby step number six, uh, currently working two jobs, and I've been praying for God to help me with discernment to see if uh, I should continue working the two jobs um, because the anxiety is just it's getting to be a lot. And um, even though sending that big chunk to the mortgage company every month feels good. Uh, so you are debt free except your house. Correct. You're putting 15% of your income into retirement. Correct. Why are you working two jobs? Uh, because when I started this, uh, Baby Step 7 was always the goal. Um, yeah, but we and... didn't teach you to stay gazelle intense. After four, we said move from intense to intentional. You go from sprint to marathon when you go into four, five, and six. So how many hours a week are you working? Uh, it's two full-time jobs. Okay. What do you make at your main job? Um, I'm making 80. And what do you make at the second job? 60. And what do you owe on your house? Uh, 240. Are you married? No. You have kids? Yes. You have custody of the kids? Uh, 50%. And uh, I'm covering tuition. What does the second job consist of? Uh, business analyst. So both, both, works, both jobs are remote. So you, you're never off. Cut the second job in half or by 75% or quit it completely today. You don't need that 60K. Dave and I both okay. know a bunch of millionaires who crossed that finish line and they looked around and had nothing. That's why we teach it the way we do. Yeah. Uh, the, the, you know, you've... You know, you've taken gazelle intensity and put it over into those last several baby steps, and it's not sustainable. Yeah. The human body, the human spirit, you're gonna, you're running out of gas. That's why you're calling because you you're gasping for air. And I don't blame you. You're listen. You're not afraid of hard work, and you're actually not a workaholic. You're just so goal driven and focus driven that you've run you've run yourself out of your own shoes. When was your divorce? Uh, 2018. Hmm. Are you still running? Yes. Yeah. You gotta stop. Because that shadow's chasing you and chasing you and chasing you, and as the sun moves, that shadow gets faster and longer. It's gonna there, catch you. There's something uh, that is a little bit. Uh, it feels like you're afraid. If you sit still, you won't like what you hear. Or see. Am I wrong? Um, I think being uh, alone uh, these last yeah. couple of years. Um, God has been teaching me to uh, listen to myself, so I've uh, appreciated being alone and taking the time to reflect. Um, I think. I don't know when you had that why... time. <laughs> <laughs> the hours you're working. <laughs> listen, listen. There is none, zero. There is no long-term wellness. There's lo no long-term time, long-term healing. There's no long-term life with joy in it that is done in isolation. And that is done with this many hours right? in the job. Two full-time jobs, is, is it, it's not sustainable. You can do it for two or three years, and you have, because uh, you busted through the first several baby steps, and that's fine. I don't, I'm not afraid of hard work. I'm not afraid of telling people to go work hard. But, um, you know, if I, if the way I answer questions here, Joseph, is I woke up in your shoes. I'm three years this out of a divorce. I got 50% of my time with my babies. And uh, all I got left to do is knock out the mortgage. I'm currently putting 15% of my income away. I make 80. I could easily take that 60 dial it back to 20, and I'd have so much free time I wouldn't know what to do with it. And that's what I would do. And then you, you just kind of, I want you to take a deep breath, and it feels like cold mountain air in the morning coming into your lungs. That's called peace, and just feel it. And that's what I would want for you. That's what I would want to be if I were you. Um, and so... I, I kind of did something similar, and I'm not accusing you of this, uh, but but uh, when we went through bankruptcy, I worked like an absolute maniac the other side of that because I was so scared. 
and I didn't I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to I, I didn't want to dial it back. And um, uh, uh, and it wasn't it wasn't a workaholism. It wasn't in that sense. But but it was just a running like John was saying. And so if I were in your shoes, I'd dial it back. Yeah, I think there's no question. And I want, when you do dial it back, brother, I want you to make a commitment to yourself. I'm going to go walk. Or I'm going to go to the gym a few times a week. And I'm going to get a group of guys, and we're, I'm going to invite them over to the house, and we're going to – I don't know what you're into. We're going to watch fights. We're going to watch – don't watch golf on TV. God help you. But we're going to get a group of guys over together, and we're going to watch something. We're going to do something together. And I'm going to begin to build back relationships in my life. You had two years of being in complete and total isolation. That anxiety alarm that you're feeling is ringing off the wall because your body is saying, hey, we're not, we're not, we're not safe. You called us because you wanted us to alone. tell you what you already knew. That's right. It's time. That, that happens a lot around here.